Hi everyone, welcome to my research video on the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. In the early 1800s, Texas was a hot topic for debate because the United States was divided over whether the newly independent state of Texas should be added. President Polk, who was an expansionist minded president, antagonized Mexico by sending troops into Texas near the disputed Rio Grande River. In response, Mexican soldiers attacked U.S. forces, allowing President Polk to persuade Congress to declare war by convincing them that Mexicans were the initial aggressors who shed American blood on American soil. The Mexican-American War would last nearly two years until it was ended by the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in February of 1848. The treaty forced Mexico to recognize the session of these states for only $15 million in compensation for war-related damages. The United States attempted to tackle the issue of citizenship by offering Mexican citizens the option to apply for U.S. citizenship or to continue to be a Mexican citizen while being a U.S. resident, which is basically a green card today. Almost 90% would choose American citizenship while others return to Mexico. In terms of property rights, the treaty gave Mexicans three options. One, stay and keep living where they resided. Two, sell their land and their property. And three, the option of absentee lack of ownership meaning Mexicans could go back to Mexico to seek refuge while protecting ownership of current property. The treaty also promised to honor land grants and give Mexicans the same political and economic rights as every other citizen in the United States. The Life and Adventures in the California of Don Augustine Janssen's is a memoir that can be analyzed to get an idea of how the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo affected Mexicans' lives. Don Janssen's was of French Belgian descent, but immigrated to Mexico as a 17 year old. As the title suggests, the memoir details Janssen's experiences from 1834 when he joined a Mexican colony until eight years after the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. The specific excerpt I have chosen occurs when Don Janssen hears news that U.S. Army Major John C. Fremont has been taking control of California and is nearly reaching Janssen's property. Despite rumors that Fremont burned Jansen's ranch and surrounded Jansen in preparation for capture, Jansen explains that Fremont's troops had done no damage to his ranch and surprisingly respected all the families there as well as the private property. Jansen was able to retain his land well after the treaty was signed. Later on in the memoir, Jansen speaks of Fremont in a very friendly manner, explaining that Fremont gave him a document instructing any future troops from destroying Jansen's property. Jensen is so fond of Fremont, he even refers to Fremont as a caballero at the end. From the positive manner that Jensen uses to describe Fremont, it seems as if America treated Mexicans with a good level of respect. Despite the fact that Americans conquered most of his homeland, Jensen didn't characterize Americans as these aggressive savages who set out to destroy the lives of everyone that was in their way. Combining Jensen's experiences with Fremont Along with the rights promised by the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, it seems safe to assume that Americans were generally inclusive and open-minded about different ethnic groups occupying new land in their country. However, assuming this would mean we left out critical steps of analyzing a primary source document. Before drawing any conclusions from a primary source document, it is necessary to consider the information about the source's author, the message, and the target audience. This memoir is more of a journal, so it doesn't have a specific intended audience. We can eliminate the possibility that the author has bias and is trying to persuade someone towards a specific belief. According to the memoir's intro, Janssen's was a government official loyal to Mexico living in the Santa Barbara region. This may not seem rele relevant, but ask yourselves, how might being a Mexican government official affect interactions between the official and U.S. forces. Another important question to ask would be, were all Mexicans treated respectfully, or is Jensen's experience an exception to a rule? One possibility to consider is that American government officials were much friendlier to Mexican officials than regular citizens. Perhaps they hope that by being friendly with officials, Mexican citizens wouldn't be so antagonistic towards American expansion. This would give Americans the opportunity to take advantage of Mexicans later on. To confirm whether a historical hypothesis is likely, it is helpful to relate your primary source to information from secondary sources that could give more information. 
Article 10 of the treaty stated that all land grants made by the Mexican government before the war should be respected by the United States. However, President Polk strongly objected to this article and the Senate ended up deleting it. As a result, most Mexican lands were not respected by the United States. Mexicans were stripped of land rights in other ways, including the California Land Act of 1851. This act created a board that would review all land titles to determine if they were valid. The board systematically made it hard for landowners to provide definite proof of ownership. The technology and expensive legal fees represented forms of racial discrimination that Mexicans simply did not have the political power to fight back with. As you can probably assume, the majority of landowners did not have the power to receive some of the privileges that Jansons had. Sadly, information from these secondary sources strongly support the idea that the majority of ordinary Mexican citizens never received the land, political, and economic rights that were promised in the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. This is a credit to the list of sources that I used, and thank you so much for watching. I would like to thank Profe for guiding me throughout the entire process of this research video.